بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran in the ayah that I recited قل he's talking to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ان كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني if you love Allah then the person to follow is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you love him, يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you back. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ And he will give you forgiveness. ذُنُوبَكُمْ All your faults. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ And Allah is the most forgiving. So what Allah is saying, if you love Allah, if you say you love Allah, then you need to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you back and he will forgive you your sins and he is the most forgiving. So I don't need to go through a recap because Shamran's done that. So I'm just going to go straight into t today's topic, which is about loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving the best of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, Al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And love is, uh, is a two way thing. Isn't it? Love is a two-way thing, it's a give and take. Right? You may love somebody in this world, but if they don't love you back, after a short while, after a period of time, you may get frustrated, and the feeling will not be the same. So love is a two-way thing. So the first part of the love, which we don't need to spend too much on, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet وسلم, loving us. Okay? That part is unquestionable undeniable. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us is undeniable. Who switched the on button on our heart? Who put the on button on our lungs? Who put the system defense mechanism on our eyelids? The ability for all our senses, our brain, our families, our wealth, the things that we enjoy. Who gave us all those things without us ever having to ask for any of it? We never asked for it, did we? While we were in the womb being created, or while we were with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we never asked, oh Allah, can I please have an Xbox? Or can I please have a nice car? It's the f Allah just gave it to us. Without us ever asking. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, that part is undeniable. And if you look at the first section of the chapter three, it's got some quotes in there saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for us, means his forgiveness, means his ni'mah, his blessings, means the things that he's already given us. So we don't need to delve into that too much. What we want to focus on today, what I want to focus on today, is the other side of the relationship. So Allah loves us, the other side of the relationship. How much do we actually, really, honestly, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what I want to focus today's session on. Okay? Now the first thing is, we have to define it. What does love actually mean? Right? It has a meaning, isn't it? So we say it all the time. We say it to our kids, we say it to our parents, we say it to our families, we say it to our car. Right? We love these things, isn't it? We say it to our phones, I love you baby. Isn't it? We love it. We say about our football teams, we say about sports personalities, we say about maybe about teachers, you may say about relatives, about grandparents, you say it. But in the language of Quran, love has the actual meaning. In the Sharia, love actually has a meaning. And the quotes that it goes through, love actually means in the language of Quran and the Sunnah, willing something, following something, obeying something. For example, if I love my father and my dad tells me to do something but I don't do it, 
It means I love myself more than I love obeying my father. So my dad tells me to do something and I love him, but I want to do my own thing. It means I love me more than I love him. Because I'm more prepared to obey me and will the thing that I want to do than what my father wants me to do. So now you got the bad boys. Yesterday, not yesterday, on Friday. Yeah, yesterday, I was at the park with my kids and there were, there were some youngsters like from the secondary schools and they were acting like bad boys. And I was listening to some of their conversation and said, man, bro, I'll do anything for you. And the way they were talking, they were talking about some fight or something. I said, bro, I've got your back. I'll do anything for you. Man, I go to jail for you. I don't give any, I'll, go, I'll do time for you. That's what you're saying. This is the same guy. He's prepared to do jail for his friends, but not prepared to go to Asda or Tesco or pack foods for his mum. So who does he love more? Isn't it? Love has a meaning. If he loved his mother more and his mum said, look, can you go to Asda? Please go and get some bits and bobs. He's like, oh, I ain't got time for this. But his mates call him, he's there in a flash. Shows you that he's got love for something more than his mother. So love actually has a meaning. The meaning, and if you read it, is to obey, is to will something, is to follow something. That's what true love means. Okay? That's what true love means. And that's what we need to check. Have we got that? Have we got that love for our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because they've got it for us, which we'll prove. The question is, have we got it for them? And that's what we need to go through inshallah today. <coughs> the first one, the first ayah that we'll go through in your booklets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا That those people of mankind who worship certain things besides Allah يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ So the kuffar, there are people in mankind that love certain things. They've got gods also and they love them. But the believers, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The believers, أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Their love for Allah is more than anybody else's love for anything else. That's what Allah is saying. So, in the tafsir of this ayah, Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, he says that Ibn Mas'ud asked a question. He said, this ayah, what does it mean? What, what does it actually mean? And he says that this ayah refers to the biggest sin a human can do. The biggest sin a human can do. So Ibn Masood said, what's the biggest sin a human can do? He said, it is to give Allah, to worship something alongside Allah when Allah made you on his own. Allah made us on his own. He didn't ask for help from anyone. But when we worship something, we worship something alongside him. That's the biggest sin you can ever do. That's what this ayah means. And here it's not just idols. So although the Quraysh, they had idols, worshipping something doesn't just mean physical idols. So, you know when you love something? One of the signs of when you love something is you talk about it a lot. You can't help but talk about it. It's one of the signs that you love something. So if someone loves football, what can they talk about hours on end? Football. Because they love it. They can name all the players, they can name the teams, they can name the stats, they can name the transfers, they can name everything. Because they love it. Someone loves their house. They could talk about the different types of paint. Laura Ashley, what is it called? Uh, Laura Ashley paint, Dulux paint, things that I've never even heard of. Where to put the sofa, at what angle, what coat needs doing in the kitchen now, and how, what, what's the best worktops to get. They talk about it a lot because they love it. I'm not saying it's wrong to love those things, but Allah is saying that the love for Him has to be greater than all those things. If you don't talk about Allah a lot, or you find talking about Allah and His Messenger and Islam a bit boring, then it means you don't love it as much as the thing, uh, things that you find exciting, that you find interesting that you find pleasing. It means your love is not the same. You don't love it enough. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, 
you have to love me more than these kuffar love their things. You have to. And this is something that we have to develop. And Sayyid Qutb, a shaheed rahimullah, in his tafsir, he explains this ayah and he says, you know, he's a brilliant quote. He says, familiarization blunts one's heart. What does that mean? For people who, you know, like for parents, the first time you see your baby, you go dotty over them. Isn't it? Oh my God, look, he's got the bogey's coming out, so cute. Oh, look at his nappy, oh, his first dirty nappy. Now, if my son does a nappy, I think, oh God. How, when can we get him off nappies? Do you understand? It's different now. Whereas when I first had it, I had a pure, intense love. Similarly, for those people who are married, when you first get married, there's an intensity, isn't it? Everything your wife does or your husband does is just perfect. Give it a few months and then you see the truth. Isn't it? That the, whole, the, the love changes. It's like, oh God, he's on one again, or she's on again. Because familiarization blunts the intensity. It blunts it. You don't have that intense love anymore. You have to renew it, you have to reignite it, you have to do something. Similarly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayah before this ayah talks about the wonders of this universe. And people see the wonders of this universe, but they are so familiar with it, it's blunted there, marveling at this world. It's just blunt, it's like, oh yeah, it's a nice waterfall. So one of the, you know, daughters here, she said, oh, we saw the waterfall, beautiful. She's got an intense connection with that waterfall. Well, someone else might see the waterfall, and yeah, I prefer ice cream. You understand? Why? Because they have not, it's just familiar, it's just normal. So we have to make sure that our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is intense. And we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the kafirin love their gods. <laughs> Yeah, so those kids that love Messi and Ronaldo and all these players or that love business or cars or whatever our love for Allah is greater than that love Yeah, and one of the Sahaba you know his mother she tried to blackmail him she said if you follow Muhammad وسلم, if you follow him I'm gonna starve myself I'm gonna starve myself I'm not gonna eat because she knew that her son loved him that I loved her. So I'm not going to eat. So he's like, all right, don't eat. One day goes past. She goes, are you still following him? Because I've not eaten all day. No one's stopping you from eating, mom. If you want to eat, I'll make the food. You eat. She's like, no, I'm going to keep fasting until you leave him. Muhammad Sallallahu He goes, your choice. Next day, she must have snuck in some Snickers bars or something, right? But after a few days, she was like, feeling the pangs of hunger. She said, have you still not left him? I'm dying here. He goes, Wallahi, oh mother, if Allah gave you 100 lives, and I saw each one perish in front of me, I will never leave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if I were you, I would eat. She goes, give me some food then. She knew, this person is not going to leave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there's no point in me killing myself because his love for Muhammad Sallam is greater than how much he loves me. Right? This is the intensity. This is what this ayah means. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah. And just to give you some background, Surah At-Tawbah, this surah is, is Umar bin Khattab, he used to say, before this surah was revealed, there used to be three camps. Muslim, Kafir, a Munafiq. There were three camps of people. Muslim, Kafir and Munafiq. After this surah was revealed, and in particular these verses, the world got split into two. Muslim and Kafir. That's it. That's how straightforward it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَا آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُ نِكْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, قُلْ Say, if your fathers, your dads, 
your sons, your brothers, your wives, your family, your wealth, any your home, any of these things, any of these things, you love them more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and struggling in his way, jihad and fi sabili, fatarabbasu. And I'm going to explain what that term means. Look at these things. Is it far to obey our fathers? The Prophet ﷺ said, if you make your father smile genuinely, a genuine, sincere smile, and you uplift his heart, you get the reward of one hajj. One hajj. You make your father smile. Fart to do this. Your sons, you know how much reward it is for a parent to look after their children? It is their jihad. It is what separates them on the Day of Judgment. They'll have a separate station for looking after their kids. Fart. Your brothers, you know for your brothers you can give your life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually the angels, the shuhada and the prophets will be jealous of your rank for looking after your brothers. It's a fard. Your wives, we know it's a fard. We're reminded very strongly that it's a fard, right? Your family, the Prophet says, لَيْ يُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ كَاتِ الرَّحَمْ Anyone who cuts uh, ties with their families They'll never enter Jannah. It's not possible. So our family is fard. The wealth to provide nafaka for your families, to pay for the bills, to pay for their clothes, to pay for the food, is fard for the man to do this. Your house to provide somewhere safe, some shelter, some privacy, is fard. Allah is saying, if this fard, this fard, this fard, this fard, this fard, this fard, any of these fara'id are more important, then struggling in my way, then just wait. You know like when you were naughty at school and you get in trouble and dad's not at home and your sister or your brother says, just wait till you get home. And you get that dread. Oh, dad. So you've done something wrong at school. Dad's still at work, you come home. Mum's might be a bit softer. Mum, I'm really sorry, I messed up. She goes, just wait, I'm all right. Wait till your dad comes. Because I just use the sandal, he's got the stick. Right? It's, it's a threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just wait. You think any of these? So you know those people? You know they're so... And Allah says, look at the word, فَتَرَبَّسُ Right? This word, فَتَرَبَّسُ the, the meaning of فَتَرَبَّس And this is from Ustad Numan Ali Khan, not from me. It means procrastination. You know what procrastination means? <coughs> Waiting for something to happen. Waiting for something to happen, not doing anything yourself. I know some brothers, they made a plan 10 years ago to learn Juz Amma. Just to memorize Juz Amma, it's like a plan. I want to learn Juz Amma. Everything else in their life, their home, their car, their business, their wives, their children, their education, their house, their garden, everything else, nothing else stopped. But memorizing of Juz Amma stopped. Oh, I'll do it when I finish. I'll do it when I finish work. Oh, I've got homework to do with the kids. Or I've, got, uh, I've just got to clean the garden. Or you know what, I've got to just do the MOT on the car. Or you know what, I've just got to finish off uh, doing some bits. I'm tired today. Procrastination, fatarabbasu. Putting things off over and over and over and over again. When are you going to make some time for struggling for Allah's deen? And make that the most important thing. Everything else, and nothing else waits. Everything else goes on. But you, simple thing, just learn juzamma. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. But nice. You know what? I got time. When I'm older, my kids are a bit young at the moment, so once they're out of nappies, then I have more time. You know what? My kids are taking a lot of time at the moment. Once they finish GCSEs, I'll have more time. My children are at university. Once I finish funding their university, I'll have more time. I've just got to finish baking this cake. Oh, once I've got it, I'll have more time. You ain't gonna get more time. فَتَرَبَّسُوا Stop procrastinating. Do the thing that you're supposed to do. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. So there's people who aren't going to learn how to read Quran. They've been saying that for five years. And it doesn't have it happen. Why? Ask ourselves, where's the love? If you really loved it, really loved it. I know for a fact, I love my children. Something goes wrong with them, I'll jump in a flash, I'll do something for them. Why not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
when he asked me to do something. So this ayah, look what he's saying. And Imam Ali radiallahu anh, in his tafsir of this ayah, beautiful, he goes, this surah came down with the, sh with the sword unsheathed. It came to just deal with everyone. This ayah came down and not tested the loyalty of the best generation, the Sahaba. You know, they said after this, the Sahaba, they said, we used to worry about our status after this ayah. It was a test for their loyalty. Who do you really love more? And Allah SWT sent it down to test them. Don't procrastinate. Don't take your time and delay things unnecessarily. Allah SWT is waiting with a punishment if you do that. So, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he says in his tafsir of this ayah, he gives two examples. One example which we should all know. In the battle of Badr, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, Radiallahu anhu, the one who Umar bin al-Khattab actually said, if I was going to nominate someone to be Khalifa, it will be him. He's actually better than me, he said. Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he fought his father in Badr. And his father was insulting the Prophet ﷺ. He couldn't take it. Because you insult the Prophet ﷺ anymore, I'm going to hunt you down, dad. I'm going to hunt you down and I I'm going to fight you because you're on the wrong side. Because I actually love my Prophet more than I love you. More than I ever could love you. And he said, after his battle, he killed his father in the Battle of Badr. Because his father was fighting against the best of Allah's creation. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after the Battle of Badr, his son came to him and said, Father, you came under my sword three times. And I let you off three times. I thought, you know what, you're my dad, so I'm going to leave you. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh said, son, if you had come on my sword once, I would not have left you. Once. If I had one chance, I would have done it. Why? Because their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet made them prepared to do anything. Prepared to do anything for him. And this is something that we have to strive and step by step try to build within our hearts to get that so, some sort of intensity to love the Prophet The next hadith, the next hadith that should give us all, you know we need to, we don't even know who this man is in this hadith. The hadith says that a man asked the Prophet we don't even know who the man is. But this man potentially bought us a ticket into Jannah. This man, we owe him potentially our place in Jannah because of the question he asked. He came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, when is the final hour? When is the day of judgment? The Prophet Sallallahu said, what have you got ready for it? Don't worry about when it is. What have you prepared? And he goes, I haven't prepared much. I'm going to be honest with you. If I look at my deeds, I actually haven't got that much. But what I have got is that I love you. The Prophet wasallam said, and Anas narrates, nothing made us so happy as when the Prophet wasallam said, you will be with the one that you love. You will be with the one that you love. And you can't fake it, brothers and sisters. You can't fake the love. You can fake it in this dunya. You can buy some flowers. You can buy some treats. You can buy a brother's a kebab. Isn't it? You can fake love in this world. It's so easy. Send them an emoticon, whatever. Kiss, 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 kiss. It means nothing. You can't do that to the Prophet ﷺ. You can't fake it. It has to be real. So, there's one guy who was proved to be real. Slave. A freed slave. Thawban. Radiallahu anhu. He was a slave. And the Prophet ﷺ freed him. So I free you, you know. You're, you should be free to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thawban, radiallahu anhu, every single day, he used to go to the Prophet ﷺ's house, just look around, oh, he's there. And he'll feel better. Right? One day, and he used to do that every day, just to see him. Just to see his face. One day he went, and the Prophet ﷺ was out, and he was like, what's happening here? He's not here. And he was like, he felt really sad. The Prophet ﷺ later on saw him. He said, Thawban, 
you look, why are you so upset for? Cheer up. <coughs> and he, the, he, he saw the Prophet and he goes, Alhamdulillah, I feel better now. So the Prophet goes, Thoban, why are you so, why are you so depressed? He goes, Ya Rasulullah, I have to see your face in the day. If I don't see you, I feel horrible. If I don't see you, I feel horrible. And the Prophet goes, Thoban, are you, you're being serious. You just want to see me. He goes, I just want to see your face. Oh, it doesn't have to be for long. I just need to know that you're, you're okay. The Prophet said to Thoban, you and me will be like this. Right? Very next ayah that came down to the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah saying, and those who love you will be with you in your company. Thoban from that day, he used to go around people, the freed slave used to go around to people and say, Allah confirmed my love for my Prophet. The ayah is about me. Do you know the ayah is about me? And the Sahaba used to be jealous. One lucky guy, man, we love him too. And Thoban of the Allah said, no, 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 my love is confirmed. You guys aren't going to, my love is confirmed because Allah revealed the ayah about me. To say that I love him. Just because I wanted to see him every day. Think about that. That was Thoban's love for the Prophet ﷺ. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Be careful, you will be raised with the people that you love. You will be raised with the people that you love. Be careful who we love, because on the Day of Judgment, we're going to be in their company. So, if you've got some hidden love for some weird thing, or you've got some hidden love for some character or some football player more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa be careful. So if someone loves Messi who supports Israel as an example, I'm not saying Messi is an amazing footballer, absolutely brilliant. They call me Messi Mia at school, <laughs> right? He is a brilliant player. But if you think about him, dream about him, copy him, want to be like him, celebrate like him when you score a goal. Everything is like him. Be careful on the day of judgment when you're risen and you're thinking, yo, I'm next to Messi and Messi's heading towards Jahannam. Be careful. Because you've been raised with the wrong person. You need to make dua you're raised with the people that you really love. So if you love your parents as an example and your parents are muttaki and they are pious and they work hard in Allah's cause, then make dua you're raised with them. Because then they will, inshallah, help you on the day of judgment. And for the parents like your children, if you have children who are muttaki, who are hafiz, who know more Quran than you, who know more about Islam than you, then make dua you're raised with them. Because maybe they will take us and drag us into Jannah. So be careful who we love, because we will be raised with them on the day of judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, None of you can truly believe, none of you can truly believe, until you love min ahlihi wa malihi wa nasi ajma'in. More than all these things. You know nowadays, you know like uh, people love their things, isn't it? People love online banking. I'm just going to check my balance again. Oh yes, still there. Sorted. Oh my God, I spent 20 pound on that. It's gone down a little bit. Ugh. Next day, just going to check my balance. Yep, still there. Excellent. You freak. What's wrong with you? What, how much do you love your money? You know, like people are addicted to these things. People, are, people love Facebook, isn't it? They go to the toilet. I'm just going to go to the toilet. Going to the toilet. Send. Okay. Facebook. What is wrong with you people? Why, why do you like these things so much? Why, what makes you like them? What is so good about them? They take a picture, isn't it, of uh, like a breakfast. Here's my breakfast. Excellent. Send. Excellent. Breakfast. Ha! <laughs> Love it. What's all that about? The same person never takes a picture of an ayah of Quran, send this ayah to everyone. Excellent. It's not like that. It's like there's some, there's some like block, mental block. That when it comes to loving Allah, and there's a, do you see, love is an emotion which makes you feel, which makes you follow, which makes you obey. You love these things, worldly things, there has to be an element of that with the Prophet. There has to be that element. Otherwise it's just cold-hearted. Love is closeness. Closeness, intimacy. That's what Allah SWT describes. For in Allah la yuhibbul kafirin. He won't bring them close. 
But the believers, they have that. They have that closeness. And, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, why shouldn't we love him? Why shouldn't we love the Prophet ﷺ? You know, on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet ﷺ, all of us, we would all be scared. Every single one of us will be scared for everything that we've done. And on the Day of Judgment, we will go running like lunatics, like, like crazy herd, you know, mental animals, desperate looking for some good deeds, and we will go straight, straight away to Adam alayhi salam, running, flocking towards him. We'll spot him, so there's Adam alayhi salam, let's go, run towards Adam alayhi salam. And say, so, oh Adam, you are the father of mankind, you are the first Nabi of Allah, you are the first one, you are the first one who Allah fashioned with his own hands. Please look at our state today. We are in our ankles, we are in sweat to our knees, to our hips, to our shoulders. Please do something, say something. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Adam alayhi salam said, I have never seen Allah this angry before. This is the angriest he'll ever get. He's never been angry like this before and he'll never get angry again like this ever again. Nafsi, 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 I can't help you today. Go to Nuh alayhi salam. We'll run to Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam, the first messenger of Allah, the one who lived nearly a thousand years, you saved all of creation. Please, look at the situation we're in today. Ya Nuh, please, help us. Help us, save us. And Nuh alayhi salam will say what? Allah is so angry today, I've never seen him this angry ever. He will never get as angry as this ever again. Nafsi, 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 leave me alone, find somewhere else. Don't go to me, go to somebody else. You'll run to Musa alayhi salam. Oh Musa, please. Musa, please, you are the one who the Quran was going to be about. You are the one who Allah loved to challenge Fir'aun. You saved all of Bani Israel, please. Do something, say something. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, please. And Musa alayhi salam says, I killed a man. I killed a man without uh, intending it. I've got to worry about my own things. Nafsi, 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 go somewhere else. Don't come to me. Don't come to me. These are prophets. You'll run to Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, look what my people have done. Allah is so angry today, I've never seen him this angry. He will never get this angry ever again. This is the angriest he's ever been, the angriest he'll ever get. Look at what my people have done. I'm worried about myself today. Nafsi, 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 go somewhere else. And then we will all chase. We'll all see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Isn't it? We'll all run towards him. And we will say, Ya Rasulullah, please do something for us today. Please look at the state that we're in. Help us out. And the Prophet Sallallahu will get into sujood. And he will say, Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. That's what he will say. My Ummah, my Ummah, my Ummah. That's what he will say. This is how much he loves us. Isn't it? That's what he's, that's what he's going to do for us. And that... The intensity we have to have have to be like has to be like that has to be because unquestionable his love for us is undeniable undeniable and that's when we when we think about the things that we love in this world and we think what those things do for us they do nothing for us nothing in comparison but the Prophet ﷺ will save us on the day when no one else every prophet will leave us every prophet will leave us. But he won't. And this has to be in our personality. This has to be us. That's what Muslims are. I'm a Muslim. I'm proud. I love my Prophet more than anything else. That's who we are. I love his way more than anything else. I love his state more than anything else. I love his ways of dealing with people more than anything else. He's going to save us. I love him. I'm not shy to admit that. I pray like him because I love him. That's how we have to be. That's what we have to have in our hearts. That even when I was preparing for this, I felt like a munafik. Because you think, how much do they love us and how little do we love back? How easily we forget them and how easily they remember us. And I, it made me feel rubbish. But then I look and I think, you know, we are chosen. We are chosen, we are blessed to be in this ummah. 
and we will be saved inshallah by him right and even the kuffar they used to see this the kuffar they used to see it. you know the prophet sallallahu his animals the animals used to love the prophet sallallahu he he used to have four camels four camels and each camel they used to love the prophet sallallahu you all know Kazwa, right? From Zaki and friends. Kazwa, the white camel. The Prophet, he had one camel, and the camel at the death was Shahba. When the Prophet died, the camel cried so much, he ran around, he was going crazy. When he heard the Prophet die, the camel died. Fell in a well and died. He said, What's the point being alive when my Prophet is dead? In the Battle of Khaybar, when the Muslims took the booty, the donkeys, the donkeys that they took from booty, one of the donkeys of the Prophet ﷺ came up to him. His name was Ya'fur. The Sahaba named the donkey. The donkey came to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet had miracles. He said, Oh, and look at the donkey's love. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you are the last Messenger of Allah, right? The Prophet ﷺ goes, Yeah. He goes, I'm the last donkey amongst these guys here. Please choose me. Ya'fur the donkey, he's trying, to, he's trying to intellectualize with the Prophet You're the last Prophet, I'm the last donkey left. We're made for each other, me and you. Do you see even the donkey loved the Prophet This is the, we know the story of the camel. When the camel was being treated badly. And the Prophet called the camel. And he's asked the camel, what's wrong? And the camel told him that these two men are treating me badly. They're whipping me. The Prophet called them and said, oh you two, why are you whipping this camel for? Don't you know that he's got feelings? What's wrong with you? Treat him nicely. The camel made sujood to the Prophet Sallallahu and he had tears in his eyes. And the Sahaba wanted to make sujood, isn't it? And the Prophet goes, no, 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 no. You don't make sujood to me, only to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Right? So this is, even the animals, the animals had the love. And then there's us, we know what he can do. We can think about it, we can read Qur'an, we can read the hadith, we can look at the lessons and then we're blind to it. Which is like, how, how silly can you get? You can't, it's like so, so crazy. Urwa bin Mas'ud, and we'll go through last few before the, we'll, have, we'll have a break. Urwa bin Mas'ud, he was kafir, right? He went to the camp of the Muslims. He went to the camp of the Muslims and he was trying to deal, do negotiation with the Prophet Sallallahu And he went to the Prophet Sallallahu and every time he, you know like when you try to be sarcastic, he's touching the Prophet's beard, say come on, like this. And there was one companion with the butt of his sword hit him on the hand. And Urwa was like, ah, horrible person, right? He tried to touch again. Urwa bin Masood says, your hand goes next to his beard again, you won't have a hand left. So if I you, I'd move that hand. Urwa bin Masood was like, jeez, chill out, man. He looked around, he goes, he said to the Prophet, he goes, who is this guy? This guy is the worst person you can think of. He's got bad manners, he's rude. Where do you get these people from? The Prophet says, you want to know who he is? He's your nephew. He goes, what? Maureen, is that you? Turn around, I don't want to see your face. Look away. Look how Islam changed the relationship. He hears uncle's hand, but the butt of his sword. You touch my prophet again, you won't have a hand. And Ur Urwa bin Masood then went back to his people and he said, you know what? I've been to the kings of the world. I've been to the Caesar, I've been to all these people. Never have I seen a group of people love their leader more than them. By Allah, when he spat, they would run to catch his, catch his you know, saliva. When his hair dropped, they would rush. It was like a prize, like a treasure. I'm keeping this strand of hair done. They will not give him up for anything. You will not do anything with them. If I were you, do a deal with them. This is what Urwa bin Mas'ud said. He said that he's, his, their love for him is unmatched by anyone. The Prophet Sallallahu he described Umar ibn al-Khattab He said to Umar al-Khattab, he said By Allah you have to love me more than you love everything 
Umar ibn Khattab said, by Allah, I love you. But not more than I love myself. Because then you don't, you ain't got iman then. You're not a proper believer. He said, no, 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 I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you more than I love myself. I, and he changed. He goes, Al-an ya Umar. Now, now you've got it. He changed. And Umar ibn Khattab, this is the narration. He said, people were talking in my time when I was the Khalifa. People were talking as if I'm better than Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So I had to put them straight. So he goes, Durra, isn't it? The stick. Right? And inshallah one day we'll do the course on the Durra of Umar Khattab. He goes, his stick, he goes, no, 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 no. By Allah, one day, one day is worth more, one day of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is worth more than the whole lifetime of Umar. Because Abu Bakr did Hijra the Prophet And while, you're on a, while they were on Hijra, we know that, look at the narration. Sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Abu Bakr, he went together, isn't it? Just as a point, just to give you a, a couple of points from the Hijra. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was making the preparations with his wife and his kids, guys, we're going to make Hijra. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, said, uh, look, don't be in a rush. Maybe, you know, maybe me and you, we might go together. Maybe Allah will give you a companion. Abu Bakr was straight away to his wife and children. Latest, you guys sort yourselves out. I've packed your things, I've got your, you need to go with so-and-so. You need to go as well, I've got to do my own thing, right? It's narrated that ever since the day the Prophet said to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that maybe me and you might be companions. Abu Bakr used to sleep against his door. So that if there was a knock, he would wake up straight away. Ready for the journey. He made all the preparations. He used to, when they were on the journey, remember two men that are nearly in their 50s. If you saw any person in their 50s now, they, they can't walk up Normanton Road. Isn't it? Oh, buddhi jani, hey. Isn't it? I can't, you can't, they can't even walk up Normanton Road with like shopping. This is 50 year old men going hundreds of miles from Mecca to Medina on foot. Sometimes Abu Bakr would walk in front of him, radiallahu anhu. Sometimes he would lag behind. The Prophet goes, what's wrong with you? How come sometimes I wanted you as a companion? Sometimes you're like 20 yards in front of me. Sometimes you're like 50 yards behind me. Can you just like stand next to me, please? And he goes, no, 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 no. When I think of the enemies about ambushes, I stay back so that I can fend them off. When I think of those people waiting in wait for us to get us, I go forward so I can warn you. Because Abu Bakr, you would rather you get hurt than me? He goes, Ya Rasulullah, of course, my mother and father be sacrificed for you. Right? When they were walking, you know, and they, were, they had two tracks, isn't it? Two footprints. And the kuffar are following them. So they have to get rid of some tracks. How do they get rid of some tracks? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, if they chase us now, they will find both tracks in the sand. We need to get rid of one set of tracks. Muhammad Sassan goes, what do you propose? He goes, Ya Rasulullah, the cave, anyone been to cave Ghari Hira? Anyone been? Put your hands up if you've been to, to the cave. It's quite high up, right? You've got to walk quite, it takes you a good, maybe 45 minutes. Right? If you're unfit, it probably take you longer. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, climb onto my back. Climb onto my back, let me carry you on a piggyback so and take you up there. That way they won't see the footprints in the sand. Look at this. Carry me. And this is a sign, this is the pure love. Pure love of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And he carried him. 50 year old man carrying a 50 year old man. Piggyback all the way to the top. And when he gets to the cave, he creates a lounge. Because you wait here, Ya Rasulullah, you wait here. I'm just going to check everything's alright. I'm going to just clear it out. Make sure there's no scorpions, no snakes, no spiders, apart from one nice one. Right? Which we know. I'm going to make sure the cave's all sorted for you before you do that. And until he was satisfied that he had made the lounge, he had made the living room, the living quarters, only then did he say, Ya Rasulullah, come in now. 
Now it's ready. You know like when, you, when we do it in our homes. That's what he was trying to do for the Prophet And Umar radiallahu and just not, I mean we can do a whole session on Hijrah. But he said, just that day is worth more than the whole of Umar's life. Radiallahu anhu. Just that day. That's the sign of pure love. Now, for us, and this is before we break up, there are many things that we love. And we have to, we have to try to, to, to make sure that the love for the Prophet ﷺ enters into our heart. And the, one of the ways of doing that is by learning these things. And learning what they did for us. And then you can start, question, then start questioning. You know when you go home, if you genuinely like and you can love Harry Potter or some movie or some game, more than this, then you need to question yourself. Because there's something not right within your personality. No one's saying you can't love your house. Yeah, move the sofa around however many times you want. Sometimes facing that way, sometimes facing that way, sometimes at an angle, sometimes a white coat. So fix your house however many times you want, to your heart's content. But just make sure Muhammad is bigger in your heart than your sofa, than your kitchen, than your bedroom than your study, than your car, than your Xbox, than your clothes, than your perfume, than your selfies. People love their selfies, don't they? Oh man, look at this pose, my, that's, a, that's my best side. People have this, isn't it? Oh no, no, take another selfie. You're taking it yourself, bro, take it yourself. They love themselves that much, isn't it? Make sure that the love of these things don't outweigh or take the place of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu in our hearts. Yeah? May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala save us, save us from that. Inshallah we'll have, a, we'll have a break there. But I hope you understand that for a believer to have an Islamic personality, if you don't love intensely the Prophet Sallallahu then there is something that we need to fix. If you don't love Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who has given us every single breath that we ever have had, and will have, then there's something a bit wrong. And we have to try to fix it. Right? So inshallah we'll have a we'll have a pause there, something for us to uh, reflect on, inshallah ta'ala.